Graphics Media Accelerator. Definitely a less extreme name than Extreme Graphics, but nonetheless, people still made fun of it. Many people have a burning hatred for the GMA series, and for good reason. The GMAs that most folks experienced, like the GMA 950 or 3100, were simply too weak to do any kind of modern-ish gaming at the time. But higher-end GMAs did exist, and today we're taking a look at one of them. Meet the Intel GMA X4500 series. Released on June 1st, 2008, it was built on the more modern unified shares architecture and had two desktop versions. The standard X4500, which was included on P43, G41, G43, Q43 and Q45 chipsets, and the X4500 HD, all included on G45. Otherwise, both feature 80 shading units, 10 TMUs, 1 ROP, and 10 execution units. They both also claim DirectX 10 support, more on that later, OpenGL 2.0, and ShareMall 4.0. In my mind, X4500 sort of bridges the gap between the old GMAs and the newer HD graphics series, especially with the performance that we are about to witness. System used for testing is a Dell Optiplex 7A mini tower. It originally had the Core 2 Dual E7500, but I swapped it with the Core 2 Quad Q9400. It also has 4 gigs of dual channel DDR3 clocked at 1066 megahertz and a motherboard featuring the Q45 chipset. Drivers used are Nightmares Extreme Plus modded drivers which did improve the performance by a bit. It also made the system identify the X4500 as a HD graphics, which is weird, but it is what it is. Starting off with synthetic benchmarks, in 3 Mark 03, we get 3325, which means it's on par or slightly worse than Radeon 9600 Pro. And in 3D Mark 06 at 12A x 1024, we get 1162. As for real games, we first have Unreal Tournament 2004, which ran well with the default settings, although it wasn't quite 60 FPS. Albatross is a fairly demanding map, so you will see a smoother frame rate in other maps but even here it's decent. In the latest version of Half-Life 2, we did get a playable experience with the settings cracked down, although there was occasional stuttering. On this hardware, I'd still recommend the original 2004 build, but this is still ok. The X4500 did a pretty decent job in GTA San Andreas, although changing the settings any higher than low would result in much lower frame rate. Fast forward to 2010, we have Dirt 3. The X4500 tried its best, but the frame rate was still low enough at ultra low settings that it made the cars quite hard to drive, so I would not call it playable. Euro Truck Simulator 1 shows the stark difference between APIs on the GMA. In OpenGL, the game ran horribly. It was Complete dog shit. However, in DX9 it was much better. We still didn't get high frame rates, but the game's slow pace makes up for it. I haven't found a way to benchmark The Sims 3, but from what I've played, it's fine. Trackmania Nations was a surprisingly good experience, even with medium settings. Skyrim ran better than I expected, but still quite badly. Sadly, in Oblivion, Low settings gave us around 20 FPS, and very low wasn't much better. But, and this is a big but, can it freaking run Crisis? Well, not in DirectX 10, but kind of in DirectX 9. So let me explain. As far as I know, while the card claims to have DirectX 10 support, 
It cannot cope with some of the shaders needed for TX10, which means it is the CPU's job to help render some of those shaders. As such, to run Crisis on the X4500, it's recommended to use TX9. In doing so, we see a frame rate that back then would have been acceptable. Yeah, so in terms of gaming, I was a bit surprised by the X4500. Older games should run pretty well, while games around the time of its release, well, that's when it will struggle, but not as much as you might think. Meanwhile, for general usage, which is what it was intended for, it was actually good. General desktop usage and web browsing were both smooth as silk. YouTube playback at 720p60 was decent, but would have small frame drops. Locally played videos, even at 1080p60, was a breeze for the X4500, with low CPU usage. And there we have it, the Intel GMA X4500. It was never a powerhouse, but with the right drivers and low expectations, it can surprise you. Unlike other iGPUs tested on my channel, this is still fine to use for basic tasks, while only being a year newer than the Chrome 9. No, I will never end roasting the Chrome 9, it was terrible AF. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you want more retrospectives like this one, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.